So let me define viral latency for you. In ongoing infection, most cells in the body that are infected uh, produce large amounts of virus. It goes on to infect other cells. Those cells die. Um, but there's a small percentage of cells that are latently infected. And the definition of latency is that it's a cell that is infected, um, but evidence of the infection requires it being induced from a cell that is not replicating virus. It's sort of dormantly infected. Uh, the first example of this sort of phenomenon was with uh, a, a bacterial virus They're called phages, lambda phage, for example. And two of the more common uh, viruses in which latency is important are herpes simplex virus, where it activates and, and has recurrences, and varicella zoster virus, which causes chicken pox, which goes latency, and then 20, 40, 60, 80 years later causes shingles. You're all familiar with the fact that people who are untreated have a steady state level of viral load, usually between 100 and a million copies. And then when we initiate therapy, there's this tremendously rapid reduction in the virus load as a result of the inhibition of uh, replication of new virus infections. And then at a certain point, um, the viral load goes below the limit of detection. And we, the hope uh, 15 years ago was that that was going to continue to go until extinction and a person would be cured. But what we uh, learned now 15 years ago, uh, our lab and two other labs in the country showed that patients who were fully suppressed, if you took their uh, white blood cells and cultured them, there was still virus latently present in those cells. And that stays present for the duration of one's lifetime. When we first started seeing patients in the 1980s, um, we saw people who came in with symptoms of AIDS. And um, then when we got assays for antibody and for HIV, uh, we realized that 90 plus percent of people who were infected didn't have AIDS. Uh, and many of them were completely asymptomatic, uh, transmitting their infections to others. And, that was what we called the tip of the iceberg. And now that we are trying to test everybody so we can identify them, uh, we have tests so we can identify the whole iceberg. But we have a new iceberg. So once a person is suppressed uh, with antiviral therapy and you can't measure a virus in their plasma, uh, with sophisticated tests, we can measure uh, HIV by co-culture in their blood. We can measure tiny bits of uh, virus in the plasma if we use special tests. Uh, we can measure uh, the nucleic acid of HIV that's in the chromosome of the host cell. But these tests uh, are at the limit of their sensitivity. And um, we can only measure maybe one to 10, maybe 100 such uh, infectious units if we collect a fair amount of blood. But in the whole body, there may be a million latently infected cells, and we don't even have assays for that. So the current approaches to uh, cure, we have to realize that our ability to test for latent infection is limited, that throughout the rest of the body, there is latent infection that you can't test because even the best study subjects aren't willing to donate all their bodies, to just a bit of the blood. And so um, at a certain point, we can measure the impact of an intervention, but ultimately the only test for a cure is the withdrawal of treatment. And only one person so far has succeeded in uh, having treatment withdrawn and not had the virus come back, and you'll hear from him later tonight. So the question is, how do we get rid of latent virus? The latent virus has integrated the gene of HIV into the chromosome of the host cell so that the latently infected cells, uh, the genes aren't just the ones your two parents gave you. They also have HIV in them. 
and if that cell is activated, it'll produce HIV. And so there's a lot of intense work, and I won't describe all the details, uh, describing what the mechanisms are that maintain uh, the latency and what we need to understand to activate it. Um, and there, there's dozens of host cell functions that restrict uh, genes from being read out, translated. And um, the, one of the most intense aspects of uh, cure research is to characterize the genes in the host cell that uh, restrict transcription of the HIV genes and, um, and those host cell functions are being identified so we can identify the targets for new drug discovery. So the discovery of drugs for viruses like HIV or flu or hepatitis, you know the target for the drugs is one of the enzymes, one of the genes of the virus. But for cure research, the target has to be identifying one of the uh, host cell genes that control uh, latency. And this is very complicated, and it makes drug discovery more like cancer drug discovery than antiviral drug discovery. There's a lot of intense efforts to characterize these genes, identify targets, and design compounds that will have activity against them and then test them. The strategy uh, is to use these drugs, we'll probably almost certainly need combinations, to activate the virus and then uh, this is all done in the presence of combination antiviral therapy so that the virus that is generated in that activated cell can't go on to infect new cells. And then the strategy is either that cell will die from the infection, from producing the virus, or the host cell immune system will kill the cell because it will recognize the HIV foreign proteins. The search for a cure will be prolonged and challenging. It may not be possible, but like the search for a vaccine, the challenge shouldn't preclude the effort. Um, achieving a cure would have a dramatic impact on morbidity, mortality, health care costs, uh, and transmission. Uh, we're going to learn an awful lot in the process of doing these studies, uh, but I think that we have to be very realistic that there is not going to be a miracle in the next year or two. This is going to be a long, difficult, protracted uh, effort by multiple people. I can guarantee it'll take at least a decade, maybe longer. And there's a lot of precedent for that. Um, the first sort of major example of a long, um, pro uh, prolonged effort to identify a cure for an incurable disease was acute lymphocytic leukemia in children, which was uniformly fatal. And it took 20 years to identify one drug, and now, uh, it's uh, curable in over 80% of kids. HIV is another example. The first drug was discovered, AZT, in 1985. By March of 1986, UCSD was the uh, first site to participate in the registrational study, and we put the drug into uh, volunteers here in San Diego, at what is now the AVRC. Um, and it took 10, 15, 20 years to get the type of drug combinations that we now have that are so effective. And uh, the hepatitis C story, which is the most dramatic, uh, quickly moving uh, drug discovery program in the world right now, and will have dramatic results in two or three years, started 20 years ago. So I think this is a, uh, this cure effort is going to be long, uh, in coming, but there's a lot of people truly committed to achieving this goal. And I'll stop here, and once we're finished, uh, glad to participate in any questions. Thanks for your attention.